Hello everyone, I'll be uh, reading an article that was uh, written by Paul Watson and it posted on December 27th, 2009 on Infors.com. Um, government allowed plane bomber to attempt attack. attack sorry. A passenger who boarded Northwest Airline Flight 253 in Amsterdam with attempted plane bomber Umar Farak Abdul Matalab says he would be would be terrorist, uh, had no passport, and was aided by a sharp-dressed man who claimed Matalab was a Sudanese refugee, just one of a plethora of starting, startling inconsistencies surrounding an incident that has led to ramped up security and increased levels of harassment in airports. Um, every single fact that has come to light since the attempt bombing on Christmas Day directly indicates that the bomber was deliberately allowed to board the plane, and that his attack would have succeeded if not the alert and brave reactions of passengers and flight crew. According to Kurt Haskell, an attorney with the Haskell Law Firm in Michigan, he said his wife, he and his wife were sitting on the ground near the boarding gate in Amsterdam, which is when they saw Metalov approach the gate with an unidentified man. Metalov was a poorly dressed, young-looking individual, but he was accompanied by a man in an expensive suit, uh, Haskell told MLive.com. He says the suited man uh, asked tickets ticket agents whether Mutalib could board without a passport. The guy said he's from Sudan and we do we do this all the time. Although Mutalib is Nigerian, Haskell said that the well-dressed man portrayed him as a desperate Sudanese refugee in an attempt to elicit sympathy and as a way of bypassing his lack of documents. The ticket the ticket agent referred Mutalib and his companion to her manager down the hall and Haskell didn't see Mutalib again until after he allegedly tried to detonate an explosive on the plane, states the report. Crucially, Haskell said that after the plane landed, he saw another man being attacked into custody by the FBI along with Metalov. However, the FBI later said that Metalov was only a, the only individual taken into custody. Um, where were the feds? Were, were the feds uh, retrieving their own agent, the sharp-dressed man who ensured that Metalov boarded the plane despite his overwhelmingly suspicious circumstances? Metalov was a known security threat who was on the terror watch list. He is barred from entering Britain uh, after being refused a new visa due to applying for a fake university course. Separate reports said that he, didn't, he did hold a valid visa, which begs the question, how can someone on a terror watch list be allowed to fly? On one hand, it seems that he'd been on the terror watch list, but none on the uh, no-fly list, he said. That doesn't square because the American Department for Homeland Security has pretty stringent data mining capability. I don't understand how he had a valid visa if he was on the terror watch list, Dr. Magnus Ranstorp of the Center for Asymmetric Threat Studies told the London Independent. It has also been revealed that Matala's father contra uh, contacted U.S. intelligence officials a month ago and warned them that his son was a threat, but nothing was done. The bomber's father, uh, Alahi Amoro Matalo, was a former minister and chairman of First Bank in Niger Nigeria. The member the, the bomber, I'm sorry, the bomber does not fit the image of a disgruntled ragtag terrorist. His considerable wealth allowed him to live in luxury at an impo uh, imposing London mansion. As a result of the failed attack, new security directives have been introduced for anyone traveling into America. Intense body and hand uh, luggage searches and sniffer dogs have been beefed up at departure gates and passengers have been ordered not to stand uh, during the final hour of the flight and are not allowed access to any other luggage during the final hour. However, if you're a suspicious looking man on a terrorist watch list with no passport carrying explosives, you should breeze through security with no questions asked. Just be sure to have a sharp dressed man with you at all times. Security was up at airports across the country and the effect was obvious. Longer lines at checkpoints. We were pretty sure that security would be highly increased, so we came early, we, we brought food <laughs> in case we got and they'll make us throw it out. The Transportation Security Administration says for now there are no new restrictions on travelers. A single carry-on bag is permitted, as are three-ounce liquid containers placed in a one-quart plastic bag. But screeners are clearly increasing scrutiny of passengers and what they're carrying. A young lady with her child, uh, they x-rayed the milk on how many times, and they tucked the milk out and sampled each and every bottle of the milk. Uh, it's, I've never seen that before. A TSA official says a new security directive was issued for international flights. Passengers heading for the U.S. are feeling the impact. Two agents um, check everybody's um, 
hand luggage, going through each item, taking out every sub item that was within the bags, um, going through in detail. And this was after we cleared, cleared security. The last hour on the flight, we weren't going to be allowed to walk around. We had to stay in our seats with our seatbelts on, and we wouldn't be able to have like the blankets or the pillows or anything covering our laps. Aviation security experts say as investigators learn more about the incident and the device used, additional steps could be taken. If this was part of a larger plot, can we assume somewhere there's a master bomb maker who might be making a new generation of devices using different chemicals, using different technologies, using a different detonator perhaps, or a different approach uh, to how to use these devices. So it's certainly possible we may see some significant changes and adjustments. Uh, well, there you go, folks. Uh, they're just ramping up security, so uh, we're going to get more information on this as far as this whole uh, um, Matalab character goes. I'm sure there's going to be more uh, more information coming out as far as who he really was and um, his connections and whatnot and see if this was really a government-sponsored terrorist attack that was used um, as a pretext to ramp up security measures even more um, to get those body scanners, full body scanners in there to get the uh, to get the um, thumbprint scanning uh, kiosk um, to be made mandatory everywhere. So it's like something out of Total Recall when you go to take a flight to uh, Florida or something next time. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Just leave your comments. Thanks for checking it out, everybody.